So now in the prerequisite section, um, we're going to get our local machine ready to um, run uh, any code we write um, using Node. So we're, we're effectively setting up a Node server with the UI5 tooling as well. Um, if you're using SAP Web IDE, you could skip the step. Um, but if you're working on your local machine, which I'm sure most of you are, um, I'm going to follow along through all the different steps so you know exactly um, what I did to get going. Uh, first step is going to be uh, creating a new folder. So we're inside our project folder, whatever you've called it. And now we're going to create an app folder, which by naming convention, we're going to call web app. And we're going to leave this here for now. Um, and the next thing is we're going to start with the UI5 CLI and make sure that's installed. It's already installed for me, but I'm going to run through it with you um, and then uh, we'll go from there. So you run npm install globally at UI5 CLI. Let that run. Brilliant, and to verify the installation, we can run this command, which is UI5 help. And uh, if it is successful, you'll see all your different UI5 commands here that you can use. So that's obviously successful for us. Now we need to enable an existing project. So we've already got our project folder and we've got our web app folder in here as well. So we are going to, um, enable it to work with the um, the node server. So um, the first thing we need to do is create our package.json file. And to do that, which would be the same in any other node project, you type npm in it, yes. And that'll just create the package file with everything we need. Um, so all the details are set there. Then we need to generate a uh, ui5.yaml file and that is UI5 in it. And there we go. So now we have a package.json file um, and, and obviously the UI5.yaml file. Briefly, this package.json file um, just holds um, metadata related to the project. Um, this file is used to give information to Node or NPM and allows it to identify the project as well as handle uh, the project's dependencies. The UI5.yaml file, on the other hand, um, is the project's UI5 tooling kind of configuration file, I guess. Um, so that's that's a sort of in a nutshell what they do and what they're there for. Um, so now that we've done that, we need to install the dependencies. Uh, but before we do that, so uh, for example, if you just went ahead and typed, so uh, we're going to use the SAP UI5 dependencies because we all work with SP UI5. Um, so we're going to pick up an error now when we try this. So UI5 use SAP UI5, and depending on the version, uh, you can obviously choose that version. Here, we're going to use the latest version uh, just because. Uh, most of the stuff we develop on our side is in SAP Cloud Plus and SCP or SAP Cloud Platform. So that always runs on the latest um, uh, latest UI5 version when we eventually do deploy. So you'll see it says error message failed to read manifest.json file. Creating the manifest is um, also a, a step further on down the process. We're going to be doing that a little bit earlier just so that we can set up our CLI and our node server to run um, our project. So you will see this come up um, in one of the sections, um, obviously coming up. Um, so for now, we're going to go ahead and go into our web app folder and create that manifest.json file. There'll be a lot of data in there that won't make sense um, if you're fairly new to this. Don't worry, we will cover it in a future section, but we just need it there for now to get our local project running. So we're going to create a new file, call it manifest.json. And this will be linked down in the description. Um, but I'm just pulling the data directly from um, the SAP documentation. 
And you can see there's a lot of stuff here that we're going to go through. But for now, we're just going to pull it all and add it in here. Then we just need to make a few changes. Um, so we'll just hide the folder structure for now. So um, if we just scroll through, you'll see we have a few issues here and there. Um, so the first one is handle validation. We're going to leave that as false for now because um, that's uh, not part of the scope of this section, but we will get to it. Content densities, um, I'm going to run everything as false because we just want a standard layout. Again, we'll get to all of this as we move down the line. Um, oh, and we just need to add a comma there. Right, so we've got no issues here. We should be able to save and that looks good. So we can close that. 